If for any reason you don't like the lines you've come up with, so long as they're still moist, they're still very, very movable. So don't be afraid to move these guys all over the place and play with them. They will constantly stick to the glass. Keep going until you're satisfied. I'm pretty pleased with my lines so far. In my experience with the Witch Bottles, I've found that less is almost more in terms of the dropping of the branches. I don't want too, too many, but I don't want too few. I am going to cover up more around the gems that are exposed, obviously, but my main branch drops are good. If you're at this point too, which hopefully you are, you have a decision to make at this point. Do you want your witch bottle to be very clean and open? Do you want a lot of light going through? Or do you want kind of a dirty effect? Do you want this thing to look swampy with lots of dark brown dirty looking filaments between you and the light? I personally want my bottle to look a little bit dirty. So it's at this stage where you're going to want to grab yourself a bunch more filaments. filaments again are the wispy shreddy cotton bits I want them to look almost like some sort of vile hanging moss and it's at this point where I'm gonna want to take them put them underneath areas I want to look particularly dirty and either use some sort of sculpting tool or an exacto knife or even a kitchen butter knife quite frankly I just kind of want to tuck them up underneath. And I want those filaments to drape down. And when this is hit with wood stain in the last step, all of these filaments down here are going to catch that stain and they are going to take on a dirty, ragged, swampy looking look, which is going to carry throughout the project. These ones are just a little bit too dry for my liking, i.e. they are not going where I want them to, so I'm just going to give them a quick hit of mache fluid, and now they're moving a lot better. And I'm going to keep doing that for anywhere where I want this dirty looking drapery around my project. Incidentally, sometimes getting filaments can be a pain. Sometimes you got to really tug your piece of cotton to get that fraying right. It may want to turn into a line where you want the stringy bits. But that comes better with practice. And before you know it, you'll be pulling off per perfect pieces almost every time. No matter how much your cat is whining at you in the room. Okay, what I've done is I've just added all these dirty little sections of gookity filaments in strategic sections around the jar, or bottle I should say, and those are all ready. Now I'm going to kind of look at final design elements, because I love having a couple of little curly Q sections coming off of some spots kind of like this and I'm going to throw those on right now. To throw these on it's not hard. Just grab yourself a section, find a spot you want to throw it on, If you got a piece that's kind of in the right shape to be one of those but isn't, just give it a twist.
attach it to the branch that you want it mold it how you want it to be even very thin sections of cotton will still stick to this in the final form so don't worry too much about it being too thin the next phase that we're going to work about or work with is going to be bulking up some of these sections as well. Okay, I'm all set with any of the detail I want to do. Now all I want to do now is I want to add some extra branching around these gems and there's a few sections that I want to make these branches just thicker and bigger. And really, nothing could be simpler. Just take a squidge of cotton. If you want that branch to be thicker and bigger, you can either lay it on the top or lay it on the side right around it, and that branch will get bulked right up. If things aren't sticking well, like right here, this is drooping down and not doing so good, dip your finger in mache paste Give that cotton a quick moisten, and you should be in good shape. If you can, just design-wise, it's sometimes good to avoid a lot of straight lines. You have full three-dimensional control here. You can take a line that crosses over your branch, so you get a twist that transits from one side to the other. And this will give you a little bit more of a twisted briar look. But it's all up to you. Go ahead and enjoy. Okay, at this point, I've got most of my branching yuckiness the way I want it. And I've got to start thinking about the top of my bottle. And i got to start thinking about the bottom section. Bottom section for me is pretty easy. I take all of this exposed brown paper here and I just cover it with cotton. And then I look to see if I have any of the section where my tree roots are coming. And then I try to take those roots and extend them down in a pattern that matches. The shades will tend to blend one into another, and so it doesn't hugely matter, but I do like the continuity, and so that's what I'm going to focus on first right here. My bottom is mostly covered with cotton, and now I'm just going to find the root sections, like right here is one where it meets up with the bottom, and I'm going to extend some stuff down. So now where before that section did not really root up too much, now I've got the top connected to the bottom. I've got a little micro root system connecting the two. I'm going to do that with any other area that's missing it, like right here, and unify the design. Sometimes your cotton gets to a point where all you have left are a lot of stringy pieces and they're not what you want. If this happens and you want something larger, thicker, just take several of the stringy pieces, get them together, and give them a twist, and it'll make you a larger section that you can possibly do more with.
There's our bottom all set. Our main branches are set. Now we gotta look at the neck a little bit. And here you've got some options. You can leave it just kinda gloopy around the top. You can attach all manner of branch patterns. And I'm gonna extend a few branches going up the neck a little bit towards the cork. The other trick you need to worry about with the witch bottle though is if you are working on this project all at once like I am here and not giving it a ton of drying time, you are slowly running out of places to grab this thing safely. And so consequently, I can no longer grab the bottom and start turning the bottle and my area for grabbing it is around the top. But as I start working branches up, even the top starts becoming an area where I can't grab it so well and start doing things with it. So be cautious and be willing to say, we're done for the day, give this an overnight to dry, come back to it. All this cotton is going to be hard as a rock, just like paper clay in the paper mache pumpkin. And then start working with it then. So feel free to take a break if you feel you need to, to have a spot to grip it. I'm going to do just a little bit more work with the neck of this bottle. Last thing I'm gonna do here is after I go in on a few last dirty filaments going up here, just so the top of this bottle isn't very clean. I had a really good shred there a second ago. Decided to keep it exactly as it was. And now we're gonna. Just get this dirty. And this method is the same method we use to get these dirty pieces down around here. You just shred some cotton, pull the fibers apart. This doesn't have to be hidden quite so well, but it will suffice. As soon as these shreds are on there, I'm going to start looking at filling this bottle. And again, I'm going to fill this with the completely optional, you don't have to have it, it's expensive stuff, propylene glycol. If you don't, then you're going to want to fill it up with some boiling water that hopefully you have cooled down so it does not melt your hot glue. My boiled water has been cooling for at least a half hour now. Get that going. Okay, once your bottle is at this stage, it's time to give it a fill. You're not quite ready to do the cork and the top set yet, but you have your cotton, it's moist and ready. Your water's been boiled ahead of time. If you are absolutely insane and you're going to give this an antifreeze effect, you have your propylene glycol or some other antifreeze chemical, certain alcohols will do it well. You have a cat bouncing around in the supplies behind you and you're worried that something is about to get knocked over. Furball. All right, you got a funnel ready to go. Always be aware with funnels. <laughs> if you just drop this in the neck of your bottle, that fluid in there, is, there's gonna be air bubbles trying to pop up because the air will not be able to escape around the side. So make sure you've got something in the gap between. I'm just taking this piece of wire and stick it in here so the air can escape through that gap as I pour. And it should hopefully be a relatively smooth pour. We're gonna let the cats tear ass out of here first. The cork that you're gonna put in there afterwards or rubber stopper, whatever it happens to be. If you have a screw cork or cap, you're in great shape. I have the original cork for this bottle. So I'm gonna do just a little bit of prep work ahead of time. I am going to seal up the bottom of this cork with some hot glue to make sure that this is good and very, very, very water resistant. It's cork, so it's already in pretty good shape, but I don't plan on ever opening this thing again. 
this project will be sealed after this for all time. We should get a nice thunderclap in a second. Video drama. <laughs> okay. If you have no antifreeze, great. If you do have antifreeze, I'm sorry you spend a lot of money and you're as much of a Halloween nut as me. I'm going to use about 50% propylene glycol. Because when I looked it up online, they said that would take me to about minus 55. <laughs> and I don't think I'm ever going to get that cold around here. But... The remainder of my mixture is going to be water that I have boiled to make sure that it is, hopefully, bacteria free. <laughs> and again, for the bazillionth time, I have let this water cooled. I do not want this stuff melting the hot glue that I have already put in here. Some splashes out on the project, you should be fine. The ingredient that will keep your water cloudy and give it this brilliant lighting effect, hopefully for a very, very, very long time to come, is a little bit of fabric softener. I am using some ultra downy fabric softener. That's what I could get on the cheap. Fortunately, a very tiny amount of this stuff goes a long way. It will stay suspended in the fluid, so it will not sink to the bottom, requiring you to have to shake up your container a million times in a row on Halloween night. I have put the Downy Fabric Softer into all these bottles at various times over the last several weeks, and they have never, ever cleared. So this stuff stays in suspension. It does not come out you need approximately a teaspoonful of fabric softener. A little goes a long way. You don't need a lot. Once you're all set, grab your sealer stopper of choice. In my case, it's this cork. And get it sealed again. Now, sadly, my project is still kind of wet, so I do not want to do a super heavy mix-up, but I can actually grab it by the bottom and top and run it through a series of inversions. This bottle is anti-freezed and cloudy. Now that that's all set, I'm going to recap up my stuff. I'm going to take some hot glue. I am going to go all around this cork. I do not want this thing to reopen or spill out ever again. Incidentally, another danger of using, of mixing cat meows and thunderclaps together is that the world might end prematurely. Never, never ever do that. If you use too hot of a fluid inside your bottle, there's also a chance that if your glue doesn't melt, the cooling gas inside, if you're using a cork, may snag that cork and drag it further down into the bottle than you wanted it to via suction and vacuum effect. The last thing I have to worry about before throwing a fan on this and going to play with my cat is to grab some of my last cotton here and do whatever final effects I want around the cork.
That is the tough work all done. Now at this point, throw a fan on the project, give it 24 hours, let the thunder rumble. Love it. Come back to when it's dry, and the final step, just like dry brushing a pumpkin, will bring out all the inner evil inside. We'll catch you then.